Okay, so today I'm going to talk about the connections between what's happening in Ukraine and what's happening in Israel. Uh, I put out on my community thread uh, what questions you have about the connections between the war in Ukraine and the war in Israel. And I'll just go through the questions. So the first question was a little convoluted. It was long, but to summarize, they asked if Ukraine's war would disappear from the mainstream news because of everything going on in Israel. And what are my thoughts about that? And to a large degree, it has been deprioritized. This is the way the news cycle works. The news cycle can only contain so many things. And so we have to be very careful and cognizant of that. Um, it, one thing crowds out another. And right now, the crowding out thing is the war in Israel. That does not mean that that's the most important thing. It means it is, and I'm not saying it's not important, but for my money, the more dangerous war in the sense that it could turn into World War III more quickly is what's happening in Ukraine. Um, and I think what's happening in Israel is important and we have to monitor it and we have to look for the connections because I think there are some connections. I don't know if the connections are brother and sister or first cousin or second cousin, but there certainly are some connections between what's going on in uh, Ukraine and Israel. Okay, just thought I would add this after watching your take on the Israeli-Ukraine connection. Are the anti-Ukraine-Israel uh, anti-Ukraine U.S. politicians in the pay of Russia, or are they just exploiting what they see as weaknesses in the system for the personal benefit? Okay, um, you I can't you can't tar all of them with the same brush. I think most of them are trying to make political points for themselves by taking a particular position. Now, some of those may actually be like, so a Rand Paul is actually anti-war every time he sees a war. He's never seen a war that he wanted to support. He's libertarian through and through. Uh, others are just, hey, this is the side that I'm on, or maybe they're knee-jerking a Trumpian kind of position. Let's, let's use Ukraine as the example rather than Israel. Just knee-jerking what Trump says. Others are... Where are my constituents on this? Um, but I don't know that any are in the pay of Russia. It is possible, but I, I don't perceive that. So uh, when you have somebody like Alex Jones in Infowars or somebody like that, or um, uh, I don't know, other repeaters, they may be more chummy with Russia than the congressmen, but the congressmen are trying to get elected. James Buchanan, the Nobel Prize winning uh, economist, proved, like mathematically, statistically proved, like what actions that um, politicians take are calculated most to be able to get themselves reelected. So that's what they're most interested in. Okay. Um, I think President Zelensky said it all during his NATO uh, speech in Copenhagen. It was great. And most people missed it because they weren't paying attention to that, they were paying attention to Israel, which is my point. Okay, there was somewhere I heard that the insurgents do not have much supplies or logistical trail with them, so most likely have to forage for food like the olden times where they're really not expected to survive or just going to take down as many as possible. I don't care if it's a valid military target or not. However, they fail to realize that by doing indiscriminate killings mean that they're also putting targets behind ordinary Palestinians back. They don't fail to realize that. They fully realize that. They want that. Okay, so let's address the first point. And there's more to this uh, in the question. The first point was that they don't have long logistical supply trail. Okay, they have tunnels underneath in Gaza going out into Egypt, out of Israel, where they can get supplies in rockets and other things that's how they've gotten all these things in they have these tunnels and i mean for the ukraine the israelis need are they're aware of that and they need to destroy as many of them as possible they're hiding in tunnels they're doing these kinds of things um but the idea that they don't realize that they're putting targets on ordinary Palestinians is wrong. They want bloodshed so that they can show it. There'll be more 
amateur um, cinematographers in Palestine over the next few weeks than anywhere else on earth because they're trying to show see this is what the big bad Israelis do to us so that they can get the unite the rest of the Arab world I'm pretty sure that that's what's happening okay uh, they do not have a monopoly on civilian violence, and we cannot blame Israel if they do the same. Israel is not Ukraine. Israel's is armed to the teeth, and the West cannot blackmail them on withdrawing aid in exchange for treating the enemy with dignity. If Hamas' aim is genocide, Israel will respond with genocide. Not exactly, but I understand what you're saying. So Israel is going to respond. They're going to destroy everything they deem necessary to destroy to prevent this from happening again. They have warned people to get out of northern... See, now here's, here's the trick. If you're Hamas militant who just did this kind of thing, they just warned... Uh, uh, people in North Gaza, where Gaza City is, get out, we're about to bomb it. You got 24 hours. Now, if you choose to stay, we've warned you, and you got to get out. And if you didn't get out and you're a civilian casualty, we warned you. But warning civilians means that people who are militants can go, you know what, that wasn't just for them. I'm going to get out as well, and they can live to fight another day. So it's really a, a tricky bind for Israel uh, trying to go after these militants without um, with if they go without warning then they're bad and if they go with warning then they might not get the people that they're trying to get but they're going to level much of Gaza City uh, Israel okay the conflict in Israel impacts the US are you hearing anything about the false choice I saw in the article about military aid going to Israel or Ukraine but not both are there other implications that come up to bring attention to? Okay, so what's going on there is um, there are going to be some that are saying, well, we got to do this for Israel, but we can't do this for both. But that's a minority voice. What I'm generally seeing are articles about how they're going to couple Israel and Ukraine into one package or couple even better, Israel, uh, Taiwan, border wall in the south of the United States, and Ukraine into one package. That way everybody can kind of claim some kind of victory in some to some degree. There's going to be a very few, very, very small minority Republican voice that will say, hey, this isn't right. But everybody else will get to celebrate because they get the point of the thing that they like in that package. And again, politicians want to get elected or re-elected. Do you think that Putin greenlighted it? Seems awfully suspect that it coincides with the House in extended recess to me. Um, I don't know that the House being in extended recess had anything to do with it. Do I think Putin is behind it? Here, I can't figure out the degree to which Putin uh, is involved. Whether he, I don't know that he's involved directly. I don't know that he's second order. He certainly benefits, but I, like I said, the, the analogy is it's, it, he's, it's like a relative, but I don't know that it's a brother. I don't know that it's a first cousin. It might be a second cousin, probably a third cousin. So what I mean by that is I don't think he's just pulling the strings behind the scene, but he's certainly benefiting, and because he's benefiting, he may even be in coordination of some sort. Uh, Jake Bro did a very good um, overview of this yesterday, and in his overview, he said things that I wouldn't quite say yet, but I think he's probably right about, but I can't prove it yet, so I don't say it, <laughs> if that makes sense. He, he He's a little bit more apt to try to put the pieces together before I am able to by proving it out. And he's not usually wrong. He, he's usually on top of things. So just watch that and see, you'll get a sense of that. Okay. Um, why can't Republicans see the similarities between the viola violation of sovereignty with Ukraine and Israeli situations? That's a really great question. I, 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 okay, as you know, I'm a Republican. My type of Republican people that are most like me 
are the old school Reagan type of Republicans who this is patently obvious. But there's also the Trumpian populist wing of the Republican Party and they're different. And they listen to Trump more than they think through. This is not entirely fair, but they, they tend to listen to Trump more than they listen to their own principles about how the world works. And now some of it may be complimentary, but I don't, I don't think that, um, yeah, I just like if, if Trump was saying support Ukraine, they would have been supporting Ukraine, I think, and not overriding some other principles in that. I, so there's a, there's a wing within the party and it's not all the Trumpians, but a certain percentage of Trumpians are there because of the personality that is Trump rather than the policies. And I think that's part of what's going on. I I could be completely wrong. If I'm wrong, put it in the comments. I, I, I can be wrong. I'm trying to piece this together myself. Um, it's, okay, next. I believe that Russia has its fingerprints all over this one. In what way can this be proven or disproven? I think it'll be proven in time. I can't prove it yet. Um, there will have been meetings with Lavrov and the and the Palestinian leader um, not not too long ago, and I think that we'll see reporting that will tie things together over time. I think Iran is involved. Clearly, uh, Iran has been a state sponsor of both uh, of of Hezbollah up in the north and probably. And what's happened here in Hamas as well, which Hamas was doing the attack. And there are two distinct entities, Hamas and Hezbollah. Hezbollah means party of Allah, party of God. Um, and okay, if Iran has supplied arms and training to Hamas, could it be that Iran attacked by Israel, uh, Iran being attacked by Israel and that stop Iran supplying weapons and drones to our Russia? Um, so, Israel is going to deal with the immediate threat first. They're not going to go. I mean, they're, they they attacked into Syria and they attacked into Lebanon, but that's to go after the militants that are right on Israel's border. They don't have necessarily the span. I mean, like they they attacked Israel when they were about to get a nuclear um, generator going years ago, and they they blew it up. But they're going to do that kind of targeted strike. They're not going to be taking out Iran or, you know, going to direct war with Iran. Iran's a long way away from where Israel is. Okay. Is this about raising oil price to fund Russia's war? I don't think it's about that, but I think it is a benefit. Like, so there's so many ways that Putin benefits from what's happened here. It's, it's, it's almost ridiculous. Um, but I don't think that Putin is sitting in the Kremlin going, how can I raise my oil prices to fund the war? And, and doing that, I, I don't, I don't think that that's what's happening. I think it's, uh, an accidental side benefit of what's going on that just happened to work in his favor. Okay. Um, did Russia do anything to help Hamas prepare for the attack in Iran? So there's a video circulating on YouTube from somebody that I normally trust, Anton Gershenko, I think it is. Um, I think that I, I might have messed up, messed up his name. Um, where you see in the original attack, somebody shouting things in Russian, which is really weird. Now that could have been dubbed over. I, I don't know what the authenticity of that is. But it wouldn't surprise me if there was a little help from Russia, but we have to prove that out. We can't just <laughs> like we can't just run off with what we see on Twitter as being true. Uh, Twitter is a cesspool of misinformation. Um, and even even things that are on Facebook or YouTube or other places that you think are are perhaps better are still cesspools of misinformation that you have to weed through. You just, you, I mean, until I see things in reputable sources, I'm hesitant and you should be too. Okay. Um, let's see. When is it acceptable to launch missiles at tower blocks in high population uh, densities? You did ask. That's a fantastic question. Um, so, Here's how the the Israelis are, are handling this. Um, they're going to 
So Israel has a, a policy of avenging an eye for an eye for whatever is done to Israel. And that's been the way to be secure, most secure. And what I mean by that is, and in fact, you can see that, that that's true with um, uh, like the ultimatum game where your best strategy is to do whatever your opponent does. <clears throat> Excuse me. To do whatever your opponent does and like not to show uh, weakness or whatever else. Okay, what I mean by that is they're going to, you did this Hamas, we're going to root this out. Uh, Nazis kill Jews, we're going to find a Nazi. I don't care if he's 80 years old, we're going to find him and bring him to justice. And they have gone after Nazis, high-ranking Nazis, and killed them 20, 30, 40 years later. Um, that is how Israel rolls. Now, the question is, tower blocks with high population densities. They are telling Gaza, they're making it very clear the, they're to uh, those in Palestine, in Gaza, get out of the city. We're coming for it. We're going to destroy these, root out whatever we need to root out. There are places that they know had weapons stashed and what the Hamas militants did was try to stash it near uh, civilian targets as much as possible to create casualties, which is a war crime. Going after those munitions is not a war crime, but they have warned, if they didn't warn, if they just struck randomly or, or you know, you can't tell where it's going to strike and it's striking at civilian populations, that's different. Giving the warning is kind of putting them in the clear because they they also have an obligation to defend themselves. So, okay, it's and it's a hard one because there are going to be civilian casualties because the Palestinians want civilian casualties. This is the thing. You got to understand the mentality is not the same as our mentality. Like they're not thinking in the same terms like, well, I don't want civilian casualties. I don't want my neighbors to die. <laughs> Dying as a martyr is something that is actually looked on as a positive thing. And there, there's a large segment of the population, not everyone, but a large segment of the population that wants to produce martyrs. Okay. Um, no questions. One word, Russia. Russia is still the big evil. Russia is still the great evil. Russia still needs to be paid attention to. Um, it's... it's uh, it's interesting how I, this whole thing, so it's been about a week now. It's actually been one week now. Um, and to my mind, I've paid more attention to Russia than anything else here because I'm trying to understand Russia's role in this. And while less attention has gone to Ukraine because some has been displaced to Israel, more has been placed on understanding how Russia is processing both Ukraine and Israel at this time. So Russia is still the thing that I'm paying most attention to trying to understand the connections. Would not be surprised if there's a riot against Guantanamo next. Well, I don't know. Um, I, I don't see that as a, as a thing, but there are, I mean, there's a number of flashpoints all over the world. It's, it's like the world's gone mad. Russia, have they lied about their involvement yet? Yes, in in some degree. And so what Russia is trying to do, and again, I've been paying attention to them, is they're saying, we're not for either side, we just are for peace. And what they're doing, the game, they're playing the game of trying to cause polycrises, right? Polycrises of shutting down the Black Sea, starving out uh, Africa, uh, energy crisis in Europe, this crisis here, maybe another there. Like they would, they would be, if, if she invaded Taiwan, Russia would benefit because it would take more attention away from what's happening with Russia and, and, and Ukraine. Um, and so they're just saying we're just pro peace. And as opposed to coming down squarely on the side of Israel, who has been violated just like in a significant way that as we've not seen. Um, and they didn't come out for the other side, the Hamas side, even though I think they kind of are very happy about it. 
we're for peace. And the problem is that they don't have the two state solution. They don't have the, so they're trying to restoke the fire that has been smoldering for a long time that was almost cured in the last few years. Uh, the Abraham Accords got a number of countries to agree uh, Arab Emirates and a few others to agree that Israel has a right to exist. <laughs> like that, that's it. But Saudi Arabia was about to sign on to this kind of thing. And if Saudi Arabia signs on to this, it's, it's really a, a very hard thing to go back to business as usual, where it's the Arab world in lockstep against Israel. Uh, and so, yes, that, that's, that is what, Russia actually wants from this is that they want to break uh, they they want to break the unity of the West by causing division here. Even look, even look on my channel and look at how many pro Israel, pro Arab. Um, more, I have more pro Hamas or pro Palestinian comments and trolls, and some are legitimate commenters, no doubt. But I also have these these new trolls that are doing that. I think that there's probably a connection to Russian trolls doing pro Hamas work as well, uh, which is really fascinating. And if you're if you're pro Palestine, if that's your your disposition, there's nothing wrong with you have having that pro uh, that that disposition. But when you look at what's happened on that day and you just overlook it something's not right about that you can have that the day before having that disposition is okay the day after you have to call out the evil even if you still have that disposition you still have to call out that evil okay um so i'm not lumping those people together that's what i was saying the lebanese armed group hezbollah has fired uh, a barrage of rockets into israel after at least three of its members were killed during an israeli bombardment in south uh, southern lebanon amid soaring tensions on the israeli uh, israel's northern border hezbollah needs no excuse to fire on israel they do it whenever they feel like or when they whenever they feel that they can get away with it so Israel didn't cause that. What actually happened with that is that Hezbollah has always been after Israel, trying to destroy Israel. On 18 January 2017, Russia and Syria signed an agreement, effective forthwith, with where, Israel, or where Russia would be allowed to expand and use a naval facility at TARDIS for 49 years on a free of charge basis and enjoy sovereign jurisdiction over the base. Okay, that, that is true. This is with Syria. Uh, the Russian TARDIS naval base in Syria is only just north of the border of Tripoli in Lebanon, uh, with the uh, Israel to the south of Lebanon. Is the, it isn't going to be long until Russia steps in with their own special military operation to de Hamasify Gaza by sending in what's left of the ex Wagner terrorist PMC to take control of the Gaza Strip, Russified and proclaimed as now part of Russia, where instead of Hamas being killed or imprisoned, they will just be integrated into the Russian military forces to keep control of Gaza. This would be a foothold for Putin. Okay, I'm reading down through things. Uh, Putin carries out many other countries. Putin's 10 points peace plan. Wow, this is a long, long bit. You can you can read this on here. I don't perceive that going to happen, be, being something that's going to happen. I think um, I think what what Putin actually wants to do is stoke a fire over here and not be involved, but have the fire stoked and have it politically to complain about rather than militarily something that he's going to support because I don't think he has the the means to support it. I think he's already hard up for enough soldiers to fight in Ukraine. So I, that you could be onto something. I I just don't see it. Okay, do I think that the weapons left behind in Afghanistan will be used or are being used right now in Israel? Yes, no question about it. I, I can't imagine how the Taliban would not have seized these weapons, transported at least a fraction of them to Hamas, and those are being used. I, I have very little doubt. Now, Marjorie Taylor Greene was making hay about that, about the, the weapons in Afghanistan, and 
arguing that weapons from Ukraine were also being there. And that's a Russian talk, a talking point, a propaganda point. Um, and, you know, RT was making that headline as well. So, um, yeah. Um, let's see. Absolutely none. Hamas met with Putin last year. I'm assuming that they had Russian help in planning and finance Iranian help with missile Afghan M4 purchased by Iran too, I'm assuming. Those are all pretty legitimate assumptions that have to be proven. So that's the thing. You, you can't just say that's what it, well, I mean, you can say it, but you can't say with any credibility that is what happened until you can trace that out. But it's probable that those kinds of things may have happened. Uh, is there any evidence for Russian support of Hamas? Again, not directly, uh, although like there's that Twitter video, but I don't know that that's necessarily evidence as much as it kind of looks like, right? But it's not evidence in a, in a legitimate kind of way. Okay, there is not war in Israel it is a civil clash. It's not a civil clash. There is a war between distinctive peoples that are fighting each other. It's not, this is not civil. Um, okay. Why is it just USA, UK, France, and Italy that say they will join the fight? Well, it's not. Uh, Germany uh, lit up the Brandenburg Gate in Israel's colors, which is pretty remarkable given that Germany was once Nazi Germany. Uh, pretty much all of Europe, Japan, I think Korea. Um, there's a number of places around the world. All the usual suspects that support Ukraine were largely supporting. <clears throat> Turkey was not. Um, but most of the usual suspects were there to support. Okay. I just wish that since neither side of the Israel-Palestine conflict is the good guy, okay, that's an interesting assumption um, to start with, the pro-Ukraine YouTubers would get back to the conflict, which is about uh, unambiguous good versus evil. No, with, with that attack, there was unambiguous evil. With the initial attack, there was unambiguous evil, and we need to call it such, or we lose all our credibility about talking about Ukraine at the same time. I understand what your disposition is, and your disposition is that, well, we can't really say who's the good or bad guy there. You could talk about that separately, but as far as that attack, there was unambiguous evil. It's not just one channel. Every pro-Ukraine channel is talking about Israel as if just because they got attacked, they're the victims. Well, they are the victims, and they're victims of terrible atrocities. I've seen videos here you need to see these videos where Palestinians were le like fully hacking dead bodies, like just bloodthirsty ravaging these bodies, like not okay. Not, it's not. And these were civilians or, or a dad trying to get his family out of the house. Like, think about this. You're under attack. You're getting your family. You see wife, you see child, you see child, you see child, you see dad get halfway out and then slump over dead. I saw that video. I can't unsee that video. That is evil. Those kids are without a dad now. It didn't have to happen. The Palestine, the what Hamas did was terrorism. And the PLO and the West Bank is learning how to get along with Israel. Hamas is not. They're very intentional about starting this and Israel is going to have to do something about that and it's going to be ugly. Okay. It's not just one channel. It's every pro Ukraine channel talking about Israel as if just because they got attacked, they're victims. Well, they are victims. I can't condone Hamas methods. Oh, here we go with the both siding, but Israel needs to get out of, get the F out of Palestine and back to their 1949 borders. Okay. To, uh, to do that, to couple this the doing that with what just happened is to reward Hamas for having done this atrocious attack. You have to separate these, deal with this evil, and then if you want to talk about whatever else you want to talk about politically, you can, but that's that's not okay. I think the pro Ukraine YouTubers have this stance, and we didn't get together in some room and say, hey guys, who wants to vote for this? We independently came to our own conclusions, and the first day I was stunned. The second day I said, no, I'm, I'm planting my flag here. This was evil. That was not okay. 
I'm not going to both and this and say that, it, you know, they're both bad and we're both got to whatever. I'm not going to do that. This was evil. Okay. And, and I, and I still will not go back and say a uh, both and, and if you want to talk about, um, whatever you want to do politically at another time, you can do that. Good people can disagree about that kind of thing, but this is evil. Okay. Can you square the circle cheering attacks on Moscow and condemning attacks on Israel? I mean, cheering attacks on Moscow, condemning attacks on Israel. Uh, an occupied country that has the right to resist. I, I'm not sure what you're asking. I, I think it's um, the Russians are clearly com evil, committing atrocities, rolling over the border of Ukraine, doing what they're doing to Ukrainians. I think what Hamas did to Israel, attacking civilians, uh, creating a Bucha-like situ situation, but only, um, but Bucha magnified. Uh, that's that's even hard to explain that Bucha could be magnified. Like, isn't that like crazy? Uh, but yes, Bucha magnified. Uh, so I, I see those in parallel. I understand there's history. I, I'm familiar with the history. I'm more familiar with the history than you think I am. But yeah, I see it as part of the same. Okay, uh, the way that you reacted to the situation goes against what you've been telling people. You've decided to go with a narrow view that anyone supporting Palestine is pro-Hamas. No, I've not. You're putting words in my mouth. I just said that if you want to talk about the background of it, that's a different conversation. But that's not what's happened here. What happened to, I'm just a guy on the internet trying to give you some information and don't take my word for it. Good, don't take my word for it. Prove me wrong. Show me that this is not what's happened, that, that the, these are not just a trust. Show me where the Israelis are hacking their enemies to pieces and then beheading, like, I'm not, I'm not kidding, beheading their enemies uh, after they're lying dead in the pool of blood. Like, show me where the Israelis are doing that. And then I'll say, you know what? The Israelis should not be doing this either. I, I'll say that, but show me. Okay. Uh, why do you say that people of Gaza need to leave to make space for Israel, but Ukraine, you sing a different song? Why do you think your hypocrisy is okay? Okay, so there are 10 replies here, and I'm going to uh, uh, read the replies to it because I'm just going to let the people that were reading that say that. Um, I didn't say that people need to leave to make space for Israelis, but the Israelis are going to push on them to make sure that they are secure. The people in Gaza are, okay, but before I say that, um, somebody replied, when did he say that? Can you link timestamp? Because I didn't say that. Uh, why is Israel at war in 2023? Here's the story. Uh, 115, you know, guys, epic hypocrite. I don't know who that is. Oh, that's Aiken Vale. Oh, Aiken Vale is my favorite troll. Uh, he trolls me all the time. So, uh, somebody replied, Andrew replied back to Aiken Vale. Are there any Jews in Egypt? That's an interesting thought. I mean, yes, there are Jews in the Muslim world, but they have to pay a Muslim tax, generally speaking. Uh, and they go back and forth. Yes, a whole three of them. <laughs> are there any Jews in Jordan? Arabs should help their Arab pals. Uh, should Gaza be told? Okay, so, so they go back and forth with that. At any rate, to, to this point, I didn't say that people of Gaza need to leave to make space for uh, Israelis. Didn't say that. And people are putting words in my mouth, and that's not okay. I'm taking that out. Okay. Should Gaza be totally destroyed and all occupants screened or sent to Qatar? Or I don't know where they would send them. Um, the terrorists should not be there. The people in Gaza can live in peace. They have chosen leaders that do not want to. And what happens... When leaders make decisions, the bad, now again, my PhD, my, my profession is all focused on leadership, right? Uh, built multiple courses, a master's program, a minor, a major in leadership. When leaders screw up, just think in your organization at work. When the leader screws up, who, who pays the penalty for that? 
does the leader normally pay the penalty or do people a few levels down the organization pay with either problems or being laid off or whatever else? That's what's happening in Palestine right now. The, the leaders that they elected, Hamas, has, and there's, there's a political wing and there's a military wing and whatever, but they're still Hamas. Hamas has brought down pain and misery on the people of Gaza. It's not Israel. Israel is just doing what Israel needs to do to protect itself in this time. Israel is just the means by which the leaders of Hamas in Gaza have brought pain on their own people. And they they want that. They're, they significantly are desiring that. Okay. That's it. That That's all the questions. I went through all of them on my community tab. If you have other questions for me, I'll try to answer them. But... Um, that's what we know about the connections between what's going on with Israel and Gaza and Russia. Thanks for your time. Thank you for being the kind of person that cares about Ukraine. Thank you for the likes and the shares and the subscribes. And I'm not taking my eye off the ball of Ukraine. Um, it, it's, I think, the bigger conflict between the two, although Israel is getting all the attention right now. All right. I'll talk to you another time. Thanks for listening.